In this video, I want to explore a few more of the panes that are part of the layout package. Uh, we'll start with the tile pane. I have a beginning file here in morepanes.scala. So I'm importing all of the layouts uh, that are in the, the layout package. We'll go ahead and we'll make a new tile pane. And so we don't forget, we'll set it to be the root. Now the tile pane works kind of like a flow pane with the exception that it makes everything in it the same size. So it lays things out in a similar way, but whereas with the flow pane, <clears throat> everything got just as much space as it wanted. With the tile pane, however much space the largest one takes horizontally and vertically, they'll all take. And we can illustrate this probably best with a little loop. So for i in 1, 2, 9, so I'm going to add 9 things to my tile pane. Uh, val. So let's start off with our thing being a, I don't know, we'll start off with a button. and they'll wind up being numbered. And we'll add that into the tile pane. So we'll add it to the list of children in there. And let's see what that looks like. Oop. Tile pane, new, Oop, I have the word new on both sides. CW, Val. Just the color coding should have told me that. And this should say new button instead of just button. Lots of typos. So here I have nine buttons. And as I make this smaller, it tries to line them up nicely. Uh, and if I make it thin enough, they will be all stacked vertically. Okay, so. Now I said that these all try to be the same size and we can illustrate that by adding one more thing that's not the same size. So all those buttons were pretty much the same size so it wasn't clear whether it was conforming to the button or whether it was using the largest one. We can add one more thing here that is going to be larger plus equals a new text field because the text field by default takes up more space side to side than the buttons do. And then I get this. And so you can clearly tell that each of these grids in the tile is larger than those buttons need to be. As I make this smaller, you can see it still goes to a stack, but it does so as soon as it doesn't have enough room to put a whole text field, even for the things that are just buttons. You might wonder, because I don't necessarily like how this particular layout is looking right here, what if I wanted the buttons to occupy the whole space that, uh, that the text field is? Well, I can actually do that by adding one little line. I am going to make it so that the min width here is large. Now, if I just want it so it will grow up to a certain size, so maybe 200, then we get this. Now if I could make my window big enough, of, or if I had another element in here that wanted more than 200 pixels, it wouldn't grow past that. If you really want it so it will grow to whatever size, instead of a number like 200, you can say int.max value, and then whatever it is will expand to fill it. But note that this is not expanding beyond the size of the text area, because that's the one that in some sense has a real need for the space. And so the buttons just take up as much space as the when I do that. Okay, so that's a tile pane. Uh, there are two other panes in the layout uh, package, and they are the stack pane and the anchor pane. So first I'm going to create a stack pane. Uh, 
stack equals new stack pane. And the stack pane is kind of interesting. It literally just stacks one thing on top of the other. So I'm actually going to make it so our stack pane is the root here. And then for the children of the stack pane, the first one I'm going to add is actually let's just say uh, equals list of I'm going to add the tile pane and that just to illustrate what this does let's add a button that's going to be on there how about a label a new label on stack and see what that produces there, I didn't call it stack pane, I just called it stack. And we run. And so right here, this is being centered, and if I make this smaller so that everything kind of gets piled up, you can see that the on stack is just placed right over the middle of everything else. So they're literally put right on top of one another. Um, now you might wonder, well, why would I want that? Um, I assume there are some situations where it's useful. Let's go ahead and let's add another one just so that 0, 10, 0. So I'll add a little slider in there as well. Okay, so now I have the slider going across the top of the text field, which is going across the top of our tile pane. And in this case, because the slider is totally over the top of our text field, it's really hard to argue that you'd want to be able to do this. <clears throat> Turns out it's the last uh, pane, the anchor pane, that kind of makes it so that this could be useful. So what I'm going to do is, in addition to the stack pane, I am going to make an anchor pane. And I'm going to add these two things that we have here as children. Actually, I can probably just say equals list. Nope. It'll click. There we go. Okay. And instead of adding those directly there, I am going to add the anchor pane there. And what does this change? Well, not much other than the top corner instead of centered. And so it uh, doesn't seem useful at this point. But it turns out that you can change how the anchor panes are anchored. And to understand that, it's probably best for us to go pull up the API. We have the anchor pane here. It's in the companion object to the anchor pane that you can set anchors. So I could take each of those, and I'll have to give them variable names, I'll have to create them separately. But I want, let's say I wanted to have the uh, the label at the bottom left and the slider at the bottom right. Okay, well then I could set, for both of them I could set a bottom anchor and then for one do a set left anchor and a set right anchor. Let's see how we can do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these things in their own variables. So like that and but now the slider. Okay, so we have the same things that we had and the anchor will get label and slider. And I don't really need these extra spaces in there. Okay, so now I want to say anchor pane dot set bottom anchor and we have to pass it which of the child nodes we want to be working with. So in this case, label. And I want it to stay 
uh, let's go with 30 pixels off the bottom. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the slider. And then for the label, in addition to a bottom, I am going to set a left anchor at zero, so it hugs the side. And for the slider, I'm going to set a right anchor. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'll set it to 100. We'll see what this looks like and maybe I'll adjust those numbers. Okay, so actually I do want to adjust them because when I set things for the bottom or the right, it's actually aligning the bottom of the thing and the right of the thing, not the top left corner. So if I actually want these to stick to the we can just set all of those to zero. And now they are anchored to the edges. And if I make this small enough, the stack pane is still going to make things overlap on top of one another but the anchor pane is going to keep them kind of in the corners there and I could provide offsets and so you can make stuff that kind of sticks to the corners however you move it you can use a stack pane then to overlay that on top of other things so that's how you can use these in, conju in conjunction to make interesting and potentially useful uh, GUI layouts